Hey everybody, it's Greg Wright here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an ICC profile using the X-Rite Color Checker Passport that you can use in Capture One. All right, let's get started. So if you don't have the right version, it's not going to work for you. So look to the right where it says ICC. Make sure when you open the Color Checker software that you see ICC. If you don't see that, I'll put a link to the download link. You want to download the V120 at the time of this recording, it could change but I'll put a link to this direct download. That's the version you need. And then also I'll put a link to this PDF that's written description of what to do, what I'm gonna show you in this video. All right, so make sure you've got that. Once you have that, what you have to do next is obviously take a shot of the color checker passport using the lighting conditions that you wanna create a profile for. This is a silver beauty dish. And then if you look over here at base characteristics in Capture One where it says ICC profile, you want to click on here. Now, if you don't see what I see here with all these different cameras and other and all that, click on show all and you'll see everything here. And then what you do is you go to effects and you go to no color correction. So make sure you have no color correction for your ICC profile. For your curve, you click on that and you go to linear response. Now, all you have to do is export this. Now, to make it easy for myself, I'm just going to click on crop and I'm just gonna crop this portion of the color checker. That's all I need. Then I go to File. I go to Export Images, Variants. Here's the formula you need. TIFF, 16-bit, uncompressed. Make sure it says Embed Camera Profile here for your ICC profile. Embed Camera Profile, Resolution 300. Pick a folder that you can remember or send it to your desktop. I'm gonna click on Export Variant. I've done this a number of times. I'm going to click six. I'm going to go export one variant. It's going to export that. So the next thing I need to do is open my color checker software, which is right here. And then I have to go to that image, which is number six right here. I'm going to drag and drop that. See where it says drag and drop TIFF image. If you do the other one, it's a DNG, so it's not going to work. Once you have this, then you just need to align this a little bit better by dragging these. They're drag and drop. I'm just going to drag and drop these, get an accurate profile, and then I'm going to create profile. I'm going to call this one dash six and save. Now this is going to save it for us, but you'll have to close capture one and reopen it in order to access that new profile. I'm going to do that now and we'll pick up right there. All right, I've closed capture one, reopened it. If I go to ICC profile, I click here. If I go to other, I should see the profile. There it is there. This is the one we just created using the color checker passport. Now I can use different curves. I can use auto. I can use film extra shadow, high contrast. I notice when I go from the generic, you see how the background looks a little darker. It's a little more contrasty of an image. And then I switch to this. I go to the six. It's, you know, it's not as contrasty. So if that's a concern, you might want to go from say auto to high contrast. So once you've done that, I just wanted to show you something. So I've exported these into Photoshop, but I don't even have to do that because you'll notice right here, I see Moray on her dress using the custom profile from X-Rite. Now, if I go to the generic, watch the Moray disappear. The Moray disappears and the fabric looks like it has more texture. So for me, I find that perplexing. Now you can fix that in the software, but for me, I'm pretty happy with the generic. And so you may not want to go through all these steps. I'll show you how to adjust for that moray right here. So let's go back to the X right that caused the moray. Now what you need to do is find the section in Capture One that deals with moray. You can see here, amount. I found if I took that up to about 80, then the moray disappeared. But that's just one extra step. So that's kind of interesting that the generic profile looks better, right? you know, on a raw file, then going through all that trouble with X-Rite only to have to make some extra adjustments and see that it's a rather flat image. Now you'll probably want to experiment with this, but anyway, that's how you do it. Now, if you want to go into say Photoshop with it afterwards too, all you would do is say image, edit with, you can click on Photoshop. And these are the settings I use in Photoshop, TIFF, 16-bit, uncompressed, Adobe RGB. And then I've already opened them up in Photoshop and you can see this is the one that uh, has the moray and they both have moray. Well, that one doesn't. So this is the one, the generic profile from Capture One. And then this is the one I created that has moray. So I just kind of noticed that. 
because I was looking at the colors. I haven't done any color correction. And if you just look at this right out of the box, I kind of like the look of the generic profile from Capture One, but that's just me. Anyway, so that's how you do it. If you want to try it out, you can and see what you think. See if you're just going to go with the generic settings that Capture One has or see if you see an improvement in the overall colors. Let me know what you think when you try it yourself, if it works for you and which one you prefer. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I come out with a new video every week. If you don't want to miss it, click on subscribe and hit that bell notification to get an email update. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. And also leave a comment below about what you thought, whether this is worth the extra effort that it takes. All right, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.